Hey guys, I hope everyone is doing well today. Uh, so in this video, we are going to be talking about market bubbles. Uh, and we're gonna be doing four things in this video. I'm gonna give you guys a definition of what a market bubble is. We're gonna talk about four different phases within a bubble. Uh, we're gonna talk about how to sort of best protect yourself from, from risk and downside in a bubble, as well as maximizing your, your investments. And in fact, you can actually make money, you know, in or around bubbles if you, if you know what you're doing and have pretty good uh, intuition and timing. Uh, and then we're going to talk about is Pokemon in a bubble? Uh, and the, and whether it is, uh, and if it is in a bubble, what effects that's going to have on sort of the long-term future of Pokemon, if any, okay? All right, so to start, I think a quick definition of what a bubble is. So the definition that I, that I like to use for myself is something like when there is a sort of extreme increase in the value of, in this case of a, of a collectible, because we're talking about Pokemon here. So you have an extreme increase in, in the collectible or the asset or the stock or the company, what have you, um, without a change in the intrinsic uh, objective qualities of that product, all right? And so we, we have those two things right now in Pokemon, I would argue, with that definition of a bubble. We have what I would argue is extreme changes in prices, okay, with the exact same intrinsic qualities of the car of the of the cards, right? The cards haven't changed. They're still the same rarity scarcity as they as they ever were. They're still the, the exact same cards. So what has changed, before we get into the other parts of the video, what has changed, right? to some degree, is the awareness of those intrinsic elements. I think more people are becoming aware of the cards, aware of their potential in, in genuine investor value. And that activity to me is not bubble activity. So determining whether or not we are in a bubble is a difficult thing, but I will leave that to, you know, and it's a little bit more complicated. I'll go into my thinking on, on, on why we are or aren't towards the end of the video. But putting that aside for just a second, um, when we're talking about the four phases of a bubble and how to make money uh, from a bubble, the best time to buy in a bubble, and this is going to be pretty obvious, is the first phase of the bubble. And this is a phase where, you know, in Pokemon, if Pokemon is in a bubble right now, and let's just say that it is, okay, for the sake of illustrating this, you know, about a year ago, I felt like we were in, we were starting to get in sort of that phase of price momentum going upward. It was extremely, extremely um, uh, slow, but there was like, I felt little bits of, of new people coming in and little bits of increased activity in certain areas. And when I felt that, it felt so strong within those individuals and within those people that basically my thinking was that I extra extrapolated that and I felt like so many people are going to in the next four or five years rediscover their collections and so many people are going to have that intense nostalgia and exuberance that I'm seeing in some of these people that we're going to see a huge movement in Pokemon and I was extremely bullish on Pokemon and if I had had this channel I would have probably been saying a lot of that to you guys and Rafi can attest I was saying that to him all the time and I was literally spending every dollar I possibly could on it because I was feeling that and I saw that coming um Although if I had a channel, I would have felt, just to be completely transparent with you guys, I'm, I would have felt all, like, uh, do I really want to share this stuff or am I going to get ahead of my own purchasing here, right? It's, it's the reality. It's like I am trying to invest in some of this too and, and hold some of my cards to my chest, right? So it's, it's a tough thing. I, I try to be, you know, in this environment, I feel like I can be as, tra as, as transparent as possible. Um, but there are certain environments where, where it is difficult. And you have to be tactical, okay? Um, so putting that aside. So when I felt that energy, when I felt that sort of energy, I started buying as much as I possibly could. And that is the best phase to buy in. When you are really, really engaged in a market, 
I think that you have the highest uh, and are just sort of like intuitive on on spending patterns and people's behaviors. I think you can you can get ahead of it these sorts of things and get sort of way ahead of it where there are only a few other people buying. And at that point, like there was almost like no one was like buying everything up. Like people were trying to get things for like lower and lower prices. Like some things were, were actually going down in value like a year and a half ago, for example, um, st you know, slightly, you know, and you could just go onto eBay and buy like four of like any PSA 10 first edition hollow you know, you want it except for like the really low pop ones at that time. And then some of like your, your, your heaviest hitters, right? Um, uh, but even those, they still had copies of them, you know, coming up to auction all the time, PWCC auctions, those sorts of things all the time, right? So um, the reality is nobody was buying everything. And if anyone, including me, saw this coming, they might buy they might have tried to buy everything. Of course, I literally, to be fair to myself, I literally spent every dollar that I budgeted on Pokemon every month, every week, and uh, because I was so confident that things that things would go up. So that's that beginning phase, okay? The few people, and this is often referred to as like smart money. The smart money comes in at this phase, at this stage. The smartest money, the people who know the hobby the best, okay? Next, next, fa next phase or idea you get into, so the market starts to get a little bit bigger, okay? Um, more people are sort of buying in and getting on board and getting hyped up. And then you see, you know, depending on how big the collectible is or how big, you know, the, the, uh, the market is, you're going to see cert like media attention or unusual media attention. So in Pokemon, we are seeing that, right? We're seeing YouTube, video we're seeing a lot of YouTube finance channels coming up, ding, 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 ding. You know, that's, this is sort of like building bubble type activity. More and more eyes, more and more interest, channels growing from nothing very, very quickly, right? Because there's so many eyes and interest. And then you're seeing like things like celebrities, um, I think it was like Logan Paul. I'm hopefully I'm getting the right, the right Paul, um, you know, recently came out and said he's, he bought $60,000. You know, I've covered Gary Vee on this channel a few times, you know, Justin Bieber had Pokemon, whatever, but, and I made that video on like the coolness in Pokemon to sort of go over is Pokemon becoming cool. And part of that coolness factor, right, is what I'm talking about. It's that increase in awareness. All right. Uh, so awareness and we'll get into this sort of at the end a little bit more, isn't necessarily a bad thing, right? And doesn't necessarily lead to a bubble. So you have to have good bubble instincts to tell, is that a, is the awareness rational and reasonable or is it overly exuberant and greedy, okay? And so that's where I've made videos on this that I feel like there is a lot of an investor greed mindset in Pokemon right now. How do I make the most money? How do I make the most money? How do I make the most money? Not... How do I get the cards that I really want for my collection that I love for a, for a, for a fair value or reasonable value that I feel like uh, is, I'm comfortable with and can budget for? And hopefully it will go up over time, but you know, I'll be okay if it comes down a little bit. That type of attitude, right? Big differences in those, in those types of attitudes versus that attitude of like, hey, these things will only ever go up in value 20 years from now. These things will be hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars. Like that sort of, sort of, um, you know, or I would call like irrational exuberance. Not impossible, you know, for some things, right? But there's, there's an irrationality in that. That's an extremely unproven claim that you are feeling very confident in, that you are just stating as fact that those cards are going to be worth that Sunday. All right. Um, so that is, that is why a lot of this phase, instead of people becoming very well, like educated and smart, calm buyers and sellers, there's a lot of irrational exuberance in this phase right now, which is driving those prices up a lot more than they would be going if people weren't having such a fear of missing out. And I don't think fear of missing out on their collecting goals. I think fear of missing out on their investing potential. I think a lot of it's greed oriented. They, they are, have the fear of missing out on profits. And when people are afraid of missing out on profits, they, they tend to do irrational things from my experience and lose a lot of money. Okay, so just be aware of that for, for you specific people out there listening to this. Okay, so 
But that phase isn't like a full-blown bubble phase. That's sort of an awareness phase. And um, there are good, as I said, there are good and bad parts. There are dangers to that phase. But if you keep yourself very like level-headed and not too emotional, you can certainly find good deals in that phase. And I would say that that phase for Pokemon started, I really felt the uptick, you know, I, I want to say it's been about maybe seven, eight months now, uh, something in there, you know, around the time of the new year, around the time of 2020, and then it really sort of picked up into COVID. And so I think that that we are sort of still in that sort of phase of a bubble, in my personal opinion, in Pokemon. We haven't gotten to the fourth phase of the bubble, which I will call uh, mania. All right, a, a mania phase, something like that, you know, full blown mania. And that is where you're going to see people, um, more and more people. We have quite, in my opinion, we have quite a bit of mania. In, we do have a decent amount of mania in Pokemon, but we're going to see that mania like completely take over. You know, we have lots of people making outlandish claims, in my opinion, all the time about the future of Pokemon based on nothing and, and no no real experience in, in any other collectible hobby or citing any data from any other hobby and saying how Pokemon is going to be the best and and will outdo every other hobby. You know, these sorts of things. Again, possible, but ir but it's an irrational claim right now. It's a bubble, it's a, it's a people, it's not a claim that anyone can make right now for certain. So that sort of thinking is very dangerous, right? So we have elements of the market and, and, and certain YouTube channels and certain people within the community on Instagram, other places, kind of in that mania mindset, in my opinion, the full-blown bubble mania. But I don't think that is like, a huge majority of the market. And I don't know how much of the market's in that because I still feel like there are a lot of pretty, pretty calm, uh, rational decisions being made and people are still buying with some of that, that in mind and that, that mindset. And so that makes me feel good about that. Hopefully the mania isn't gonna just like keep, keep building and then we're gonna see a big bubble crash, but we could, we'll have to see. So. Um, so, you know, that'll like, if it, you know, good signs that we might be in like that full blown bubble to me would be more and more people. And I'm seeing some of this right now, right? Like these aren't distinct, like easy to define distinct phases, right? They're, they sort of meld or like, you know, uh, merge into each other, but you know, more people who have like no interest in Pokemon talking about Pokemon, big names. People talking about how it's like a great investment without giving much detail. You know, Gary Vee is such a huge example to me. Um, all right, that sort of thing. If you're gonna, if you see more and more of that, and a lot more people come out and do that, and then you have a lot of people who have absolutely no interest, like you have friends and relatives who have no interest in Pokemon, starting to like buy buy the product who have no con personal connection to it for investment purposes, that is where you're getting further and further away from like the collector in uh, enjoying the intrinsic value of the cards and paying for that intrinsic value and towards that completely, you know, uh, investor mindset, completely divorced from, from the cards themselves, from the, in the intrinsic value of the cards themselves. And that's when you're really in a full bubble. And so people have to make that judgment call for themselves. Do they see that around them? Do they feel that in Pokemon? And uh, you're only going to know that by being very engaged in social media and very engaged in like what happens in the next six months. We'll know a lot more in six months to a year, I think, about what this period is. You know, does it stop at sort of that third phase, not full bubble? And then is there like a small retrace or does it like, you know, keep going up a little bit, but not in a manic sort of way and then retrace to what it is right now, you know, which would obviously be great for all those people buying in, in right now. And, you know... You know, I, I hope that happens for you guys. Like, I'm not, I'm definitely not rooting against any anyone making money. I just want to warn, I just want to warn people of these, like, market fundamentals, and then you can make your own choices, right? Okay, so the, the, the last phase I want to talk about is uh, the bursting phase, okay? And in this phase, you can actually, you know, I talked a lot about that irrational exuberance. In this phase, you can actually experience irrational pessimism you're gonna see and you know i saw this a little bit in in 2017 when i got into pokemon there are people when people lose money and card values go down it is amazing how and and this is so true for the stock market i'm a big investor in the stock market it is amazing how people panic like your stock goes down like eight percent for example 
and nothing's fundamentally changed. It's just, you know, it's the same company and it's the same rough numbers, you know, but all the computer sell-offs, you know, happen and people just have, you know, so radically change their, uh, their feelings about the same company that they felt amazing about two days ago. And you're going to see the same thing happen in Pokemon if there are big retraces. It is going to devastate the value of these cards in certain people's minds who don't actually, particularly those who don't actually feel connected and enjoy them and only are buying them for investment, okay? And um, you're going to see uh, uh, a panic and a fear and just as greed drives a bubble up because people are investing to make money right there. They want to get rich. You're going to see that fear drive it down. And all those people are going to then sell to the patient sort of collector types who, who are, you know, probably didn't buy at the high, but also, you know, uh, you know, um, kind of save their money and were calm and are now able to sort of buy at the low and reestablish that base, get in at those lower prices for the next sort of run up. So that would be the, the, the way to sort of make money on bubbles. The two best ways are in the big, to buy in the beginning. And these are obvious things, but buy in the beginning, right. And then buy at the low point. But being able to determine and have the intuition and the instinct to 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 uh, not obviously time that within a week or a day of that, but to, to, to time it, to have a rough sense of where you are in that cycle is vital, in my opinion, to being a good, a good investor. You know, the other option, right, to being a long-term investor is just buy them when you think, look for, look for cards and look for collectibles and look for any assets that you feel like are gen, genuinely undervalued by people, buy them and hold them for a long time. And don't worry about the ups and downs. Don't pay that much attention. Just look at your cards and enjoy them, right? And it's the same thing for your, for the stock market. Don't check the stock market every day, right? It's, it's because that is the type of, when you do that, you psychologically and emotionally put yourself in that roller coaster and, and, and make yourself susceptible to the, to the greed, you know, and to the fear. Okay. Which, which, uh, both can really, really hurt you. So the last point I want to make um, you know, I think I answered, I guess, two things. I, you know, I think I answered that, do I think Pokemon is in a bubble? I'm not really sure. I don't, I don't, it's definitely not in a fully fledged, like we're definitely in a bubble type thing. But as I said in, a, in my video, you know, probably a few months ago now, you know, I had some concerns video. I have those same concerns. My concerns are not much, I don't feel much worse than I did, which is nice. I feel like things have stabilized a bit, which is, which makes me more comfortable in the market right now and 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 the short term to medium term of the market but in terms of my long term confidence in the market i'm i'm very confident in the market i think people genuinely do love these cards and there is a genuine uh, uh joy and and wanting to own these these very scarce uh, cards and they're just it's at the end of the day it's a supply and demand thing and there just aren't enough to go around for that genuine demand but uh at what price is that genuine demand going to be? And I think that, in my opinion, that, that, that price has been driven really high in a very short amount of time by a lot of bubble-like behavior, by these sort of like investor, speculator, you know, speculator types who aren't very like patient and follow the herd mentality and get rich quick scheme type mentality. And I think that we may see it come back down to meet to meet sort of more of that like collector, you know, base uh, uh, in terms of the prices. But we'll have to see, you know, if that happens, how that goes, when it happens. Do, do the prices continue to go up? Why are they continuing to go up? And I'm just going to continue to update you guys on my feelings and just give you my thoughts and try and be as most helpful as possible. You know, the the last point I will say in this video uh, is that bubbles uh that overall like even if this does get into like a really feverish bubble um there will be some downsides people there are going to be some people who get burned really bad and just like leave the hobby and instead if they had been more patient they may have stayed for for a long time um you know fear really can not kill but really damage hobbies and so we don't want things to be too swingy and too up and down and too intense because you're gonna you're gonna have people have such a bad time that they that they leave or it's gonna be just like emotionally too much they're not gonna stay engaged right um, uh, but 
the awareness piece is so amazing for the hobby. Like the awareness piece of like having these celebrities be interested in it, like Pokemon becoming like cooler, more acceptable, maybe not like, you know, so awkward and uncomfortable that you collect Pokemon, Pokemon becoming something that like you're, you can be proud of and show people who aren't that interested in, in Pokemon and they would still like it and think it's like pretty cool that you own those and that you enjoy it. Like if, if like, if the market gets more to that point and Pokemon in general gets more to that point through a lot of this like bubble activity and awareness and movement up, that will be very good and healthy for the hobby in the long run. All right. So I, I think that what we all can do to support that is just like be very honest with each other. We need to call out, you know, people who are scamming, trying to manipulate people within this type of like crazy market and people who are who aren't trying to manipulate, but I think are just sort of like irrationally optimistic without very like sound fundamental market principles behind it. You know, um, and as I will say, like I am not panicking to sell my cards. I don't, I don't necessarily think like right now is gonna be the highest that Pokemon ever is. Uh, it very well could be though. It very well could be um, depending on how all this, this turns out. Uh, but I think, you know, far more likely because we're going to have more generations of Pokemon enthusiasts coming in and uh, and eventually, like, you know, almost all of the, the sealed product that can be opened because the prices, you know, might keep going up or might stay so high that some people just are refused to open that. We're going to see, like, these pop reports more filled out. And I think once we know exactly or have a better idea of how many of these cards are there are in the world, you're going to have a lot more investor types and collector people interested in owning them because there isn't this fear or this feeling of like, there could be so much more out there. And I think we're still early enough in Pokemon and, and early enough for a lot of sets uh, and even your first edition base set that there's still going to be more cards that are going to sort of trickle out. And there is still that feeling of like, how many more are there going to be there? And once we know that, people will be more comfortable being like, okay, well, there are this many, and this is how much the demand is. And I see, and I can, ha you know, figure out a better sort of like value, value equation within that. And that will be attractive to people. Okay. Um, so thank you so much for, for uh, watching this video today. And, uh, you know, I guess a couple channel channel updates here. We're, we're closing in on 2,000 subscribers, which we're really uh, uh, you know, proud of and, and happy of and built a little little community here, and we've had a lot of fun doing it, uh, Rafi and I. We have a lot more exciting interviews and different things, you know, coming up for you, collector chats, interviews with experts, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and also at 2,000 subscribers, we are hoping to finally do that, like, live, start doing some live um, if I can figure it out, I'm not that good with the, with the whole technology stuff, but if I can figure it out and Rafi and I can figure it out and I'm sure we will, we'll, we'll, uh, 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 you know, we might mud muddle through it a little bit, but we'll, we'll figure it out for you. Uh, I, I, I really like that idea because I think that engaging with you guys just completely off the cuff, uh, and hearing all of your guys' opinions and us being able to like have debates and conversations, we'll see what kind of structures we can come up with. We'll create actually the most useful content for people, uh, even more useful than these like semi-prepared videos. All right. So uh, uh, I hope you guys you know are looking forward to that, and and we'll uh, we'll be able to sort of like pick a time where a lot of you guys can join us for the for the live stuff, and we can have those conversations. And if we can't, maybe we'll figure out a system on on how to uh, uh, give you guys uh, uh, a way of sort of contacting us or giving questions that we can maybe cover in that sort of in that sort of live stream and then you can watch the live stream later and, and get some of your answers something like that so um, so thanks again for watching and uh, I'll have another video for you guys soon take care